studies here in Drexel. Um, we're always very excited to come um, to the Center City campus for books and bagels. Um, and so, welcome. And I'll do a brief introduction for our moderator, um, Julie Kinzel. She's an assistant clinical professor in the Physician's Assistant Department, CNHP. Julie has been a faculty member in the Physician's Assistant Program since July 2006. She's currently the course director for the Principles of Medicine Science course. She's a seminar and lab instructor and organizes long-term patient, long-term care patient encounters for students. She's a faculty advisor for the Wilbur W. Oaks PA Student Society, and she continues to practice clinically in the suburban gastroenterology and liver disease practice one, one day a week, right? Right. <laughs> okay, good. So, welcome, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. So good afternoon, and we have three really interesting groups of uh, presenters today. I think, you know, in a nutshell, we could almost say it's a cultural diversity kind of presentations this morning, this afternoon. Um, we are going to start with Chelsea Johnson, and Chelsea is a second year MPH student concentrating in community health and prevention. She moved to Philadelphia from Washington State after she completed her Master's of Art in Psychology and Spanish. Her topic today is implementing health education workshops to reduce preventable diseases in the Alavita Al 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 community of Costa Rica. And she just returned last week from Costa Rica where she was uh, doing surveys and collecting data on there on interests of uh, patient education or health education topics. So Chelsea, welcome. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so as just mentioned, um, my master's project is working with implementing health education workshops to reduce the preventable diseases in the Alavita community in Costa Rica. It's a very poor community just right outside the capital, San Jose, Costa Rica. Um, so they experience a lot of a lot of issues. So a little bit about me. Um, from Washington State, I'm from um, Lacey all the way over here, which is the University of Washington. Um, got two BAs, psych and Sp um, Spanish, and I have a minor in chemistry. So my Spanish comes in handy when I go down to Costa Rica. Um, in the past, I worked for an institutional review board and. I worked at a free clinic in Idaho, which really opened my eyes to public health and why I came to Drexel to get my um, master's in public health. I've done past research at a neurosurgical lab, which was really interesting. We were looking at um, how um, we're looking at cancer cells and nerves. And then my future plans are I'm attending medical school um, this coming fall. So um, this is my project. So. This is the sign that's actually in front of the free clinic that's in the Alavita community. It's my community-based master's project. So it's a year-long um, research project that I'm doing. And I'm working with the Foundation of International Medical Relief of Children, which is based here in Philadelphia. But they have seven sites all over the world, El Salvador, Uganda, Costa Rica. So they're kind of all over. And I got lucky and got the Costa Rica site. And um, what they do is Alavita is, you have San Jose here, and then Alavita is on the outside of San Jose, kind of right at the base of the mountains. And over 12,500 mostly Nicaraguan immigrants live there. And so they can't access health care, the Costa Rican health care, they can't, they can't get basic services, education, a lot of things like that. So they, they experience a lot of issues. Um, so the clinic is set up there to provide medical, psychological, and health education services to these people that are in desperate, desperate need of them. So um, this is a photo of kind of the soup kitchen that the clinic works with. Um, this is where we do our health education. So my hypothesis is if we do consistent and standardized health education, we're going to reduce the incidence of preventable disease to community. Some of the diseases we're seeing right now is parasites because they don't they don't have floors in their houses. They're very like they're, they're shacks and they don't have floors and they don't wear shoes and they don't have bathrooms. So the parasites actually come up through their feet and make them really really sick. They don't know how to wash their hands. They don't have good water, so they're drinking 
um, disease-ridden water, so they're getting parasites that way, and a lot of gastrointestinal problems. A lot of things that are preventable. Like they know how to boil water, which we clean their water. So um, that's just some of the things we're seeing right now, and what we're going to try and teach them how to prevent. So. When I went down there, um, we did a pre-assessment survey. So it was a short survey. We, the, the patients that came into the clinic was all in Spanish. Um, they're very illiterate, so you can't, they, they don't, you can just hand them something and they would do it. You have to speak with them. And so the pre-assessment survey is to see how they're living, where they're living, what their habits are, like oh, do they wash their hands, <coughs> what kind of foods do they eat because um, we're seeing diabetes, high blood pressure, we're seeing a bunch of things like that. Um, so it's just kind of to assess what's our starting point. And then the clinic sends out monthly progress reports to FEMRA here at the headquarters. So I get a look at that and that tells me how many women is the clinic seeing, how many children is the, is the clinic seeing, what diseases is the clinic seeing, you know, upper respiratory infections, gastro problems. And that allows us to see, okay, what's the most prevalent, what are we seeing the most. Um, so once all that data has been um, analyzed, which I'm currently working on right now, um, we're gonna, I'm going to start forming lesson plans, and they're going to be standardized. So they're all going to be the same. They're going to be um, on topics that are very simple, like hand washing, how to protect yourself from the sun, etc., how to clean your water. Um, we're going to ask participants at the beginning a couple questions, and it's hand raising, you know, do you know the answer? And then they'll raise their hands and tell us the answer tally that and then at the end of the workshop we'll see do, did knowledge increase do we see do more people know the answers at the end and it's all done by hand raising because they can't read or write and so that's going to start being standardized they're going to start doing it consistently and the clinic down there is going to have a plan for the year given so what I'm going to be putting together and then in a year we'll see what the what the report the monthly reports say did the diseases go down did they increase did something else come up what's did, is health education actually working? So a lot of the things that um, we're kind of experiencing that are troublesome for us is that those high levels of illiteracy, like I'm saying, they can't read, they can't write. Um, so it's actually difficult because you have to speak Spanish to them. And I'm, I'm a native English speaker, so sometimes you know when I try and speak Spanish to them when I was down there, they didn't really understand what I was saying. And even the people that work down there, there's a lot of miscommunication. Extreme poverty. This is a photo of kind of what they live in down there. It's very just cardboard, tin like houses, very small. 12 to 14 people live in these little houses. They're very, very small. Um, and they don't have floors. Like it's, it's either rotten wood or ground. It's just gravel. Um, they're uneducated because they're coming from Nicaragua. You know, they can't access the, the school system in Costa Rica. So a lot of the times, you know, we're seeing 16 year olds that are getting pregnant. And it's just, it's, it's a lot of things that's working against them. Poor water and food quality, you know, they're eating a ton of rice, they're eating a ton of, you know, junk food, because that's what they have access to. They don't have gardens or, any, you know, their walkways are literally like this big, and, you know, so trash can people can't come down, uh, policemen can't come down, and so they literally are living in this filth and only have access to very minimal things. They try and hook up their, like, pipes, um, for water to the local like pipe system, but they're doing it themselves, so it's still not clean. Um, so they're still experiencing a lot of those. Time and resources is also a huge one. Um, you know, the clinic is is really small as itself, and there's very few people that actually work there and have time to like take on this type of a project and deal with them. One thing also that we're noticing is I'm mostly in the United States, and I'm dealing with Costa Rica, and then getting the data back to the United States. There's a lot of miscommunication and sometimes it's like what does that mean can, can you have to get clarification and then available space as you can see this is an average day at the clinic it's just packed with kids packed with adults and very very crowded so and then in the last is the interdisciplinary connections um, it can my project and the clinic itself can work with all of these medical definitely because they're, they're coming in to seek medical treatment Pharmaceutical. This is the pharmacy in the clinic. Um, very, very small, very basic. Um, so just, I got to be the pharmacist for a day, and I was, it, it definitely needs a pharmacist. <laughs> um, psychology, we do psychological services there. Um, they're starting to expand into dance therapy, which is awesome. 
public health, um, with the health education, outreach, nutrition, because these people don't know how to eat correctly, don't have access to things. Um, and then engineering, you know, the, you can kind of see, you know, it's not really pretty. It's kind of falling apart and just being able to kind of expand and grow the space. Um, so this project in itself kind of can, can encompass all of those and everybody can play a part, which is really great. And that is my project. So thank you. Have a, an opportunity for